have reached deep into my heart and deep into my mind, and I can state with conviction that I am making the right decision. Well, when Eve Adams' heart and mind encouraged her to bolt from the Conservatives to the Liberals, the Liberal gains seemed to be met with an almost universal thumbs down, at least from the media. Was that fair or not? Andrew's in Toronto tonight, Chantel's in Vancouver, and with Bruce away this week, Althea Raj, Huffington Post Ottawa Bureau Chief, joins us from the Capitol. All right, Andrew, is it fair? The way the media kind of trashed well, this move. I right. can tell you, I was at a gathering of Liberals uh, tonight in honor of Erwin Kotler here in Toronto, and several MPs were there, and the reaction I got was pretty universally uh, bafflement, uh, dismay, uh, if I can put words in their mouth. I hope Jerry knows what he's doing. That's Jerry Butts who negotiated the deal with uh, Eve Adams and her fiance Dimitri Soudas. Uh, I think there's a lot of concern in liberal circles. You certainly heard that coming from the riding that she's supposed to run in, Eglinton Lawrence, uh, people saying, quote unquote, over my dead body. Uh, I think people are really wondering what the game plan here and what exactly is the upside for them. Chantel? Hmm. I guess uh, if we weren't uh, surprised in a negative way, then you would have to call us really cynical because we've been told for, what, two years that Justin Trudeau would do things differently. Um, and suddenly you're told that uh, on a principle that we are still looking for, uh, someone is crossing the floor. And now MPs do leave their parties on principle. Maria Mourani left a block over the Quebec Charter. That's understandable. But you're talking here about a Conservative MP who last week, on a free vote, could vote any way she wanted, voted with the Conservatives against restoring the census, uh, a long-held cause of the Liberal Party. So you, you can only ask yourself, if this is the new style of politics, it really looks like the old one. You know, Stephen Harper said when, if he was elected that first time, it would be a new style of politics. And within an hour, he took a liberal uh, floor crosser and David Emerson coming over and put him in the cabinet. Uh, so these things do tend to change over time. Uh, Althea, you were in the room when all this happened. What, what was your sense? Uh, well, I have to agree with Chantal on this one. I think that he's he has been telling us, even during the Liberal leadership, that he was going to do things differently, that he was a new style of politician. And here we go. There is, you know, the Conservatives were out there very quickly saying the only reason Eve Adams was uh, switching uh, to the Liberals was because they wouldn't even allow her to run in the riding which she currently represents. Uh, they, she had essentially run out of options, and the Liberal Party was the only place for her to go if she potentially uh, could win a seat in the GTA or now in this case in Toronto proper. Um, but I'm of two minds on this. I think that, yes, on the one hand, people who follow politics quite carefully know a lot about Eve Adams. They know about her a long history with the uh, contentious Oakville North Burlington nomination race, the troubles that she got there. They recall um, the sort of tantrum that she uh, did at an Ottawa gas station where she parked her car and refused to uh, leave because she was upset with the car wash. Um, but I think most people actually are not aware of those things. And so all they'll see from Monday's announcement is really that there is pretty politician who was a parliamentary secretary who decided that she doesn't like Stephen Harper and has decided to join the red team. Well, let me pick up on that point and show you a clip. And you wonder, is this the clip that ordinary people, in other words, not the uh, inside the, the Queensway types in, uh, in Ottawa who cover politics uh, and the MPs that Andrew was talking with tonight. Is this what they'll remember? Watch this from Eve Adams the other day. I can no longer support mean-spirited leadership that divides people instead of bringing them together. We need a kind, generous and strong leadership that champions a shared vision for how to make Canada work for everyone. I want to work with someone who inspires, not with fear mongers and bullies. All right, she's not the, the first conservative female MP to get out of caucus, thrown out although, uh, you know, in the case of Helena Georges, who said mm -hmm. something like that. Does that have any impact, Andrew? Well, it's not exactly news that Stephen Harper can be harsh or bullying. Uh, it seems to have been news to her, which I think a lot of people, whether you follow politics terribly closely or not, will find a little hard to stomach, that she somehow just discovered about five minutes ago that she was uh, serving under a, a guy that she found kind of hard to take in that way. Uh, it looks what it is. It's very opportunistic. 
I'm not sure that it's a great prize. I mean, there's a difference between this and David Emerson crossing. They were both supremely cynical, absolutely, but David Emerson actually was a prize. He was a pretty substantive uh, cabinet minister. In this case, it's not even clear whether she's going to win the nomination in the writing that she's seeking, let alone win the seat. So if we're just looking at her for the moment, uh, this is, you know, the gain is purely that one day where she announces that she's crossing, and maybe you get some good press out of that, but they didn't even get good press from that. No, no, they sure didn't. We, you are left wondering, what should Justin Trudeau have done? Should he have said no? If he'd said no to the crossing, I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I cannot recall any <laughs> leader of any party ever saying no to somebody who wanted to cross the floor and join uh, them. Uh, uh, excuse okay, me. Okay, correct me. But uh, there is a block, uh, the, an NDP MP who is no longer an NDP MP with a very poor attendance record who, before she announced to the world that she would stay home and not run again, uh, offered herself to the Liberals uh, in an interview and they took a pass. It is possible to take a pass. You just don't know when parties mm -hmm. take a pass. So uh, the notion that you, you, there are no leaders who take passes on floor crossers, I don't think that's borne out by any evidence. Because how would we know that they have taken a pass? Would anyone brag about that? Okay. Mm -hmm. I, as you can tell, I'm trying to play devil's advocate here. <laughs> yeah. See what I can get out of you guys. Let me try the other card on the table, which is Dimitri Soudis. Another potential reason to have said okay to this deal. And for those uh, out there who don't know who this is, uh, let me show you. Dimitri Soudis was standing next to that man, Stephen Harper, uh, for most of the last decade, more than the last decade, actually, uh, very close confidant of uh, Stephen Harper, one assumes knows an awful lot of things uh, about Stephen Harper and how he uh, plans to either run the next campaign or how he's most likely to be in a campaign, given his past association with him. Althea, does Dimitri Soudis, the fiancé of Eve Adams, make it worth the while for the Liberals to take it? I think for now the answer is yes, but uh, just for now. Um, you know, I, I, Dimitri was not just a high-ranking conservative. He was the guy at Stephen Harper's side for years. He probably knows the Prime Minister better than anybody except the current Chief of Staff, Ray Novak. He was then Executive Director of the Conservative Party. He was intimately uh, aware of their re-election strategy, their ad strategy. The fact that he essentially is now part of the red team, or that his spouse is part of the red team, or fiancé, actually, to be technically correct, um, is a huge shock to the Conservatives here, and their their heads are still rolling. Some people want to have, like, a whole-out war against Dimitri. And at the same time, uh, Mr. Sudas is playing um, both sides of the equation, telling his close friends that he actually, you know, he's still a Conservative and he, you know, still has a government's best interest at heart, but I'm sure the Liberals think that he's actually in their camp. All right. So I think they know that they can't trust this person, but he does come to the table with a lot of information that I think they deemed valuable. All right. Uh, Chantelle has been shaking her head on this one. I want her reaction, but first of all, I, I want you to listen to Stockwell Day. This is what he said on, on uh, Power and Politics the other day about Dimitri Soudas and the possibilities that, that it could hold for the Liberals. Watch this. He would have been involved in a, the uh, debate preparation sessions, very closely involved in those. And those are long sessions. Sometimes they extend over a couple of days. And uh, he would have worked on the prime minister's, um, you know, we all have weaknesses, we all have strengths. Sure. So he would have worked on those areas. So uh, I agree with what some of my uh, previous colleagues here have said. He's got a pile of information. Yeah. There can be some collateral damage. Uh, I don't believe it'll be mortal. All right, Chantel. Well, I didn't know that the Liberals uh, lacked for brass knucklers, uh, that they would have to go borrow Stephen Harper's. <laughs> and I don't know that after three elections, four elections, the Liberals wouldn't have figured out what makes this candidate tick, that they would need uh, Dimitri Soudas. But I'll go to something that is more in the real world. Dimitri Soudas is not very old. He does have a family. Uh, he had the trust of someone who is the highest job in the land. I'm curious to see how many IN employers would be comfortable with someone about whom it is said wildly that he is going to be telling everything he knows about this previous employer so as to make him as vulnerable as possible. This isn't like selling a product, it's really selling confidence. 
But yeah. the thing that I think we need to remember is Dimitri Sudis is completely and totally in love with Eve Adams. He, you know, uh, essentially caused her uh, to lose that Oakville uh, North Oakville North Burlington uh, nomination race because they got disqualified because he helped her cheat and he used his position in ways he shouldn't have and he made no qualms about it that he would do it again because he's so in love with Eve Adams. So I think that Dimitri Soudis is going to stop at nothing to make sure that you know Eve Adams is going to be a liberal member of parliament in the next election. Andrew where are you on this? Uh, he definitely is willing to do whatever it takes. He's always been willing to do whatever it takes, which again makes her a profession of astonishment at the cynical politics of Stephen Harper so hard to take because Dimitri Soudis was part and parcel of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think there is a prize there, not only in terms of he was in charge at one point of election planning for the election to come with, for the party, but also he knows what what other dirty tricks they might have been up to, what where the bodies may be buried, as they say. Uh, obviously, the, the, if, if the only way you can interpret this that makes any sense at all is that Dimitri is the play, is, is the, what they were going for. They must think, the liberals must think, that the contents of his brain are useful enough to them. That's, it seems to me, um, Eve Adams' ticket to that nomination. If it was just her, probably she wouldn't have a chance at winning that nomination against a, an already, a, a, a fellow who's already been lined up in that riding for some time running for the nomination. But if Justin Trudeau decides to uh, put his thumb on the scales, as it were, in that nomination, as he's shown he will do in other places, uh, then she may well have a chance, and Dimitri may be her guarantor of that. If she wins the nomination, she ends up going up against uh, uh, Joe Oliver, the Minister of Finance. Here's what he had to say about all this this week. I think that uh, uh, Ms. Adams should have uh, taken into account the admonition of Groucho Marx, uh, which is uh, that I wouldn't uh, join a club uh, that would have me as a member. <laughs> Whoever said he wasn't a good communicator? <laughs> not bad. Not, not bad. Not bad, except Groucho never laughed at his own jokes. <laughs> is Joe Oliver in trouble if she does win the nomination? Um, I know the riding pretty well. I covered Toronto for a long time and a lot of federal elections. I'm not sure you can parachute someone in that riding that easily. And I'm not sure that the local Liberals, I'm not talking here about the crowd from Queen's Park that's friends with uh, the Trudeau crowd, but the local Liberals, I'm not sure that they're going to be working very hard for her if she's the candidate. Anybody want to uh, challenge that? Uh, well... I think that, you know, the two things there. I think, one, this announcement was really badly managed in the sense that uh, Andrew already mentioned it, but we had the MPP, uh, Mr. Cole, come out and say over his dead body, was she ever going to become the Liberal candidate? You'd think that they would have at least tried to get some local buy-in. Um, but I think that during the election campaign, when Justin Trudeau is trying to uh, hammer the government over income splitting as really unfair, and the government, is ha essentially that message track, the government not caring, to have Eve Adams attack Joe Oliver uh, by saying, you are not the former finance minister, Jim Flaherty. You're no Jim Flaherty. Jim Flaherty recognized that income splitting was a problem, that it benefits so few people, it costs so much money, and the middle class does essentially gets nothing. I think that's not a bad thing necessarily. And this is not just one tiny little uh, local race. It's going to be a race with national attention because of who Eve Adams is and who the finance minister is. If, of course, she wins the nomination. Let if me show you one thing. Got yeah. yeah. Well, let me show you one thing. It's got absolutely nothing to do with any of what we've just talked about. So I got a hint of it earlier in the newscast. It's Barack Obama today doing something for BuzzFeed. And I raise this for a reason, which I'll tell you in a minute. <laughs> Mr. President? Can I live? You do you. YOLO, man. <laughs> All right. All right, so I, I don't know how they convinced him to do that. Probably. Perhaps because already in a couple of hours has had over 13 million views. The most watched newscast in, in the U.S. gets 9 million viewers. And this is the way a lot of things are going now. They're just ducking around uh, the journalism and getting their message out a different way. This is just being a, a fun thing. But you wonder whether we're going to see some of this on an election campaign. You've got 15 seconds, Andrew, to tell me. Guaranteed. I mean, you saw, was it just before, just after the State of the Union speech, where he gave an interview to a YouTube host or a couple of YouTube hosts. Some of these YouTube channels are getting 25, 30 million views. You saw the other day Benjamin Netanyahu doing a commercial for his election campaign that was basically a comedy routine. Uh, this is politics in the 21st century. Yeah, well, I guess we better get used to it.
Thank you all. Andrew uh, here in Toronto, Chantel in Joy Vancouver, and Althea, great to have you join us tonight from Ottawa.